Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Scott Smith. I'm the superintendent with Cedar Springs Public Schools, and thank you for joining us for our webinar this evening uh, as we talk about the launch of the 2020-2021 school year. So as we are working in Zoom, uh, you've hit a milestone. Uh, I've realized now that uh, the capacity of my account only permits 100 attendees. Uh, and so I apologize uh, to the individuals who are not able to join us this evening, I'll work on uh, making some, trying to make some adjustments within my account uh, so we can add more capacity for future, uh, future meetings. We will uh, definitely add uh, additional webinars like this and, and, and uh, community forums like this until uh, individuals get their questions answered around the start of the school year. So once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I wanna give you just a little bit of the background in terms of the format for this evening. Uh, as I said, we've got 100 attendees joining us tonight. And uh, what we want this to be is an interactive meeting uh, to some degree. So um, what we will do is we will give attendees the opportunity to ask us questions uh, using the Q&A portion of, of Zoom. And so you can click on the Q&A uh, tab and then you can go ahead and type your question in. We'll be tracking those questions um, and we'll be responding to those. We'll use those questions as the guides for our dialogue uh, after we do a short presentation. We'll also be logging those questions and providing those questions, uh, providing answers to those questions on an FAQ document that we'll also have on our website. Um, I'm also recording this uh, meeting and so we'll be able to share this with individuals who wanted to, to attend, uh, but were not able to attend this evening due to the limitations uh, on the Zoom uh, on the Zoom call. So with me tonight, uh, I've got Jen Haberling. Jen serves Cedar Springs Public Schools is our uh, Director of Academic Services. And then also with us this evening, Matt Blood. Matt serves is our Director of Human and Community Services. And then also with us tonight is Heidi Reed. Heidi serves as our School Board President. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll uh, turn on my screen share. We'll go through uh, a series of slides uh, and then you'll have the opportunity to uh, engage with us by typing in questions into the Q&A portion of the meeting. And uh, we'll just facilitate and work through those questions and get as many questions answered as we can. Uh, if we're not able to get to any of uh, some of the questions uh, due to time restrictions this evening, uh, then what we'll do is we will um, make sure that we address each of those questions in that Q&A portion. Uh, that we'll be posting uh, out on the website, uh, hopefully uh, early in the day tomorrow. Um, so first, uh, again, just thank you for coming in. And as we look at planning for the fall of 2020, I can tell you that uh, never before in the history of the United States and in our public education system, have we uh, faced such, um, such a diverse set of challenges. Each new year is, uh, is, is, a time in which we have an opportunity to answer questions and make improvements over the year before, but the COVID-19 pandemic has really uh, created some unique conditions uh, that districts like Cedar Springs Public Schools all over the country have had to face and are, are working towards creating uh, optimal solutions to provide the best possible learning experience for our students, but also to reduce and mitigate the risk uh, to, the, to the highest degree possible of the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, one thing I can share, we've been working nonstop uh, really since last March. Um, it was funny on March 13, when I got up in the morning to take my dog for a walk, I thought, wow, what am I gonna do today? I won't have any kids on campus. Uh, but it really has been a remarkable time of uh, just uh, a, a lot of challenge and, and a lot of volume of work. Um, and there's a lot of work left to be done. Um, so, you know, as we look at these plans and we share things this evening, uh, I'm going to start off just by saying that these are the plans based on the information that we have at 7.05 on August 6th. Um, changes are occurring regularly. We're getting new information from the Kent County Health Department, from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, from the governor's office, from Washington, from the CDC. And I assure you that we will continue to make adjustments as needed to maximize the safety and security of our students and staff, first and foremost. And then secondly, 
we want to maximize that learning experience for our students this year because we know how vital it is for them to make gains academically, but also for our students to make gains from a social emotional perspective as well. And so as we look to planning for the fall, you know, one of the things that we have to be able to try to do to the best of our abilities is to predict the path of COVID-19 and to predict the path of the spread of the virus. There were a number of ways, uh, waves that were shared uh, with districts early on in terms of looking at varying paths and in, in various uh, peaks and valleys of how the COVID uh, virus could spread within communities. And as you can see, there are a number of different uh, models that were presented to us as we started to uh, do some of this uh, concentrated thinking around how to best uh, keep our students and staff safe in the fall, but also to provide a, a robust learning experience for each student. So at the end of the day, we want all of our kids back on campus and we want to be in person to the best of our abilities. We know that that's what's best for a majority of our students, but we also need to plan for a fluidity uh, situation whereby we may open in phase four of the My Safe Start plan and realize three weeks into the school year that the state has to roll back into phase three uh, in which we would not be able to have students on campus. And so we've really got to be fluid in our thinking, uh, in our approaches to the 2020-2021 school year like never before. So as we look at the fall, we are planning for two, uh, two options as a district. So the first option is in-person instruction uh, with a high degree of safety and health measures. Uh, implementing those measures to the best of our abilities uh, within, uh, within reason. The other option that we have is that we'll be providing our students and families with the option of engaging with their learning uh, in an online format um, that will be at home uh, in a virtual setting. Um, th that will be the, the, the combination of, of options that we will have. Uh, what I want to do is I want to share, give the uh, screen over to Jen uh, Haberling and let her talk through uh, just some of the comparisons that you can expect as a family when we engage with our students remotely in the spring in comparison to engaging with our students remotely in the fall. Thank you, Scott. So um, you might notice here we have a comparison between what it was like in the spring to be an at-home learner and what we are hoping it will be like in the fall and what we are planning and preparing for. In the spring, because of the executive order that the governor um, put forth for us to follow, participation was really optional for our students. This fall, that will not be the case. Participation will be required and our pupil accountant will be taking attendance and grades will be kept. In the spring, mainly the learning was self-paced, but this fall, whether it's in person or online, Daily instruction will be um, happening, and if you're choosing the in-person option and we're in phases four to six, of course, that will look like a fairly normal classroom. If we're in phases one to three, the remote instruction will be happening with some live options um, that students have to attend to, and then some self-paced learning that they would be doing. In the spring, because of the um, requirements under the executive order, there was low accountability for students. But this fall, um, attendance, grading, and daily assignments will be part of the accountability measures that we will be having in place, much like normal school. And in the spring, there was a high degree of flexibility. But whether we're in phase four or phases one to three, there will be a set daily schedule with expectations for students. And then to continue that comparison, um, this spring there was really a limited opportunity to have assessment, mainly because we've not done digital remote assessment before, but we do have the opportunity to do that and we're ready for that this fall. Um, so whether we're in person or remote, we have uh, options for our teachers to be able to assess where students are and where they need some additional help or support. And um, feedback will be more regular and more qualitative to help students know what they're doing well and where they can improve. There, in the spring, there were differing expectations depending on grade level or building, maybe even teacher to teacher. 
but we've been working since early June with a, a large team of about 70 teachers and administrators and support staff in order to make sure that we have consistent expectations across our district and within buildings. And again, um, we followed the executive order in the spring and now we're following the My Safe Start Back to School Roadmap. So our first option, option one, and if you received the um, message today from the school, you saw that there was a survey in that that is serving as an enrollment form. If you're choosing option one, when we're in phases four to six, that will be students physically present on our campus. Elementary students, by and large, will stay in their one classroom with adults traveling between the classes to prevent the mixing of students. So as an example, instead of going to a PE class or a music class, the music or PE teacher will be coming to those students and they'll be taking them outdoors for an experience we're calling outdoor recreation. At the secondary level, it will be a six period day with more safety measures in place in terms of um, staggered transition times and to the extent possible cohorting um, and more um, safety measures in terms of masks and hand sanitizer and washing hands. Students in both elementary and secondary will have smaller lunch settings so that classes are not mixing together. And um, the food services uh, is working on some ways to make things touch free and contained in packages so that there's less touching of uh, food items. If we're required to go back to phases one to three or because COVID-19 has spiked in Cedar Springs, then the required learning um, will be for students at home with uh, something that is called Canvas. And you'll be learning more about this as a family. Canvas is a learning management system that allows teachers to post all of the information about the class online so that you can access it in one place. One of the things we really heard from our, um, our parent survey data was that parents were having a lot to manage during this time and in the midst of a, a pandemic. So we've tried to make things more streamlined where it's a single sign-on. Parents have the opportunity to be an observer so they can see what students have turned in and what they have not turned in, what the assignments were, what the scores and feedback were, all through Canvas. And you, you also can sign up for notifications so that um, if your student doesn't turn something in or turn something in late, you receive a notification. Uh, it has a lot of nice features for parents to be able to personalize it. And all of your students who are Cedar Springs students will be in one learning stream for you as a parent. So you don't have to log into each student as an observer. You can coordinate them all together and even coordinate it with your family calendar. When we are in phases one to three and learning from home, um, there will be a very consistent daily schedule with a beginning meeting or a beginning hour class. Uh, there will be live teaching for a good portion of the day and remote practice feeding and grade, um, grades for uh, students as they are processing through the learning. There are attendance requirements as we are being held at this time to the current attendance um, protocols that the state of Michigan has. So it will look much different than it does in the fall with quite a bit of accountability. And if we are in phases one to three, if you are a secondary student, actually, if when we're in the beginning of school as a secondary student, you'll be receiving a Chromebook that you will be carrying back and forth to school. And uh, elementary students will have one assigned to them that will go home with them if we have to pivot to phases one to three. So what will that look like during the day? I think that's the big question. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have a video up on the website that will be a glimpse from two principals about what the day will look like. And they're just going to describe for you what will it look like if we're in person, because it certainly is not going to look quite the same as it did when we were in January or February of 2020. Um, masks are required because of the Safe Start Roadmap. Um, that is a requirement across the state for all schools, public and private, that students are required to wear masks, teachers are required to wear masks. So that will be something that um, we will provide, but students can also provide their own. Hand sanitizer has been installed outside every classroom and common space. So students and adults will be um, using that hand sanitizer as they enter and exit each classroom. And there are times planned into the day for hand washing. 
And then because of traffic flow, class size, and staggered transitions, we will also mitigate the spread of COVID-19 um, while we are in person in our buildings. So that's option one. Option two, if you so choose, is fully online. And this would be a choice to be a member of the CS Red Hawks online school. If you're not able to attend in person or you have some health concerns that would cause you to not want to be in school in person. We will be providing our instruction through a virtual platform. At the K-8 level, we'll be using Pearson Savas. And at the um, 9 12 level, we'll be using Michigan Virtual. So, both of those include video instruction and intervention, as well as self paced practice work. Um, each student will be assigned a teacher who will um, pull their class together occasionally for some team building and so that they feel like Red Hawks and so that they're still engaged with the people here on campus, uh, and then help them process through that learning to ensure success. Um, one thing that we know is that often students who go to an, a fully online option struggle because it does require a lot of self-discipline. It requires quite a bit of motivation and independence. And so we're going to ensure their success by providing a touch point person for them that they can talk with daily or bi-weekly to make sure that they're making the progress that they need to. So again, students really do need to be self-motivated for this um, kind of a learning platform and have some supports at home. We will have parent um, support available for that and we do plan to do checking in with those students as we would as, as if they were on campus. Because this is not the same as our in-person curriculum, it is a semester long choice. So in most cases, students will want to um, sign up for this for a semester at a time. In early December 2020, if you've been enrolled in the online option, we will give you the choice to say, yes, I'd like to stay in this for second semester, or no, I'm ready to come back to in-person. So that would be the transition point um, that would happen just after the holiday break in December. When we come back mid-January, that's when that transition would happen if you wish to come back to in-person. And that really helps us with planning staffing and planning spaces to be safe on campus. So we just need you to keep that in mind if you're making that choice. And with that option, a Chromebook is provided and your digital access needs are addressed. So again, tomorrow, um, more details about that option will be on the website. Bill Cataldo is going to be our principal for the online school and he's going to be posting a video on the Cedar Springs website under the fall 2020 tab so that you can get a sense, a little bit more detail about what that, those online um, options might be, and even some links to the two different platforms so that you as a parent can make an informed choice. So I'm gonna toss it back to Scott. We can't hear you. You'd think that I would know uh, that my <laughs> mute button was on in Zoom. I've had a couple of these meetings since uh, since early early March. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is just go to the Q and A's and just answer those, and we'll run through as many of them as we can to uh, to keep the conversation going. So um, one of the questions was around lunch schedule. So it was how early will the students be required to eat? Uh, the earliest time for lunch and what will be the latest time for lunch to be. Um, Jen, do you want to take that? Sure, yeah, that really varies by building. So um, the school board is going to look at our return to learning plan again on Monday. And once they have approved that, we'll be able to share those details. But um, that is a really specific to each building kind of a question. And the principals have built out a schedule that um, helps with that. If students have a later lunch, there'll be the option to have a snack during um, when they're in, in their classes. And if they have an earlier lunch, there will be a later snack for the elementary kids especially. And then I can answer the next one too, Scott. Um, the okay, question is, will there be young fives and will that be in person or virtual? So unfortunately, none of the online content providers have a virtual option for young fives. So the option for young fives is really in person. And I would encourage you to give Beth Whaley a call so that she's able to answer any questions you might have and help you to feel comfortable about what choice you make. 
So I got a couple of questions um, about masks and face coverings. To be clear, uh, yes, all of our students' grades K through 12 will be expected to wear face coverings when uh, they are in school. Uh, so that's in the classroom, that's in the hallways. Um, I understand that that's a controversial uh, item for many families, uh, but the reality is based on the science and, and based on what we're being told by the Kent County Health Department, that's the best way to mitigate the risk of uh, spread of this virus, uh, not only from student to student, but also from student to staff. And uh, the reality is uh, one of the things that makes me the most nervous is, um, you know, if we run into a situation where we have multiple staff members who contract uh, the virus, it is going to be very difficult for us to continue on with in-person learning uh, simply because of the degree to which we have a difficult time finding substitute teachers to cover our classes uh, in the absence of teachers. And so, you know, really the, the best way that we know to mitigate the risk of exposure to our staff is to ensure that each person who's in the classroom is wearing a mask. Um, and so that's where we are with that one. The next question is, uh, if my children have uh, a device at home, will they be, uh, be required to use a district provided Chromebook? The answer to that is no. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we have Chromebooks available to families who need them. Uh, one of the other things that uh, is gonna be different for us this fall uh, in comparison to um, the way we uh, engage with our students remotely in the spring is that we have partnered with Verizon Wireless and Verizon has, we purchased uh, a number of jetpacks from Verizon. Uh, those jetpacks will be uh, dedicated to the district provided devices. And so if families don't have internet access in their home, uh, they will be able to utilize one of the jetpacks that the district provides uh, and pays for. Um, and that will power that student device that the district gives you. Now, a family will not be able to use the jetpack to do uh, Netflix or anything like that. They will be able to, to do it to engage in the learning process. Um, but we, we know that that's going to be a, a helpful thing for many of our families uh, as we look to the possibilities of um, providing online learning for our students. Uh, another question, are face shields an option? Uh, we appreciate that question. The science that we know of uh, is uh, sharing that uh, face shields uh, by themselves don't provide the same degree of protection that a mask provides. Um, and so uh, what we can do is, you know, if a student wants to provide, wear a, a, a mask and a face shield, that's an option. Um, but they can't wear just a face shield. Um, so a question uh, in the list, what is online learning uh, supposed to look for working parents who are not uh, able to work remotely from home? Um, the, the reality is, is that online learning may, may not be the right option for your family. Uh, it depends on the age of your student, uh, or you may have to uh, find a neighbor or uh, someone else who can provide some care for your children while you're at work. Um, next question, what will class sizes look like this year, particularly in the younger grades? Um, that's a great question. Really, it depends on um, how many students elect to go online. Um, our plan is to not reduce uh, class, and we're not going to reduce the number of sections uh, that we have. Um, uh, but if we do have uh, students that go online, we will have some of our teachers that are going to be dedicated to supporting those online classes. Uh, but we expect to see class sizes uh, at or below uh, the normal uh, from what we're accustomed to in Cedar Springs. Uh, question is, will middle school be going every day and in person? Uh, yes, that is the plan as of right now. Um, we expect all of our students to be on, on uh, campus uh, who don't elect to uh, learn online this year. Uh, we expect all of our students to be on campus uh, five days a week, um, all day long. Uh, now, if something changes and we get, uh, you know, we get different um, data points or if we get different recommendations, we may have to make modifications to that. But that's part of this work. 
Um, we really are going to have to be fluid and flexible and respond uh, so that we can, again, going back to what we first talked about, we need to keep our students and our staff um, as safe as we can from exposure to the virus. Uh, and simultaneously, we want to provide our students with the most robust learning experience that we can. Um, and so, you know, we may have to make adjustments to that plan as we go, uh, but know that we want our kids on campus. Uh, we want our students in the classroom. We know that that's what's best uh, for, for the vast majority of our students. And we're gonna do everything that we can to, to make that happen. Um, a question, will the kids have to maintain a six foot distance from their classmates? So we know that uh, students are very active and very busy. And we know that um, that may well be a challenge uh, for some of our students. We're gonna do everything that we can to uh, make sure that we provide as much physical distancing for our students as possible. You know, that's one of those reasons why we are, are needing our students, all of our students on campus uh, to wear a face mask because we know that there are gonna be times when students are in close proximity to one another. And uh, in those events, then that's where that face mask becomes even more important to help reducing that risk of exposure um, to the virus. The next question is around busing. So is busing still happening? Will kids have to wear masks during transportation? Um, and the answer to that question is yes. Uh, students will have to wear face masks when they're on the bus. Uh, bus windows will be rolled down um, to help keep fresh air flowing through the bus while it's, while it's uh, in route, uh, as long as weather conditions permit that. Uh, students will also need to uh, sanitize their hands when they get on the bus. Um, one change that we will be having this year is that there will be a change to the start and end time for the elementary day. And um, the reason for that is we need to provide time for the Dean transportation uh, team to disinfect the bus between the secondary runs and the elementary runs. And so the elementary uh, schedule will start 20 minutes later than what it normally does. Uh, and it will be um, ending 20 minutes later than what it normally does. Again, that gives, uh, gives our team enough time to uh, safely um, clean the buses in between uh, in between runs. Jen, do you have a question that you see that you can grab? Sure, I sure do. Um, how will band be handled? Are there a couple about the online option that I would love to handle? Um, how will band be handled for the online option? And I'm just going to be honest, we're still working out those details. So uh, that will be something that we'll have a little bit more information about in the next week or so. Um, and then also, how will online work with early middle college students? Same thing, uh, Grand Rapids Community College is making the call about whether Grand Rapids Community College will be online or not online for early middle college. And so you'll get a few more details about that as we have a little bit more time to plan. So I've got a, a good question um, from a family who uh, receives free and reduced lunch. And uh, so the question is, if uh, we elect to learn from home, uh, how will you handle lunches? And that's a great question. We appreciate that. We uh, rolled out thousands of lunches each week during uh, the spring closure. Uh, we were feeding uh, roughly 600 students per day uh, from mid-March through mid-June. And so um, while we don't have the specifics worked out around the food distribution, um, know that we'll have various plans that we'll be able to put into place that will provide our students with uh, both a breakfast and a lunch uh, during, the, uh, during the school year when we get back to school. Um, the next question is, will campus kids be open? And uh, the answer is at this point in time, yes. Uh, we are planning on, um, uh, on campus kids. Uh, for both before school and after school care. We're also going to be providing campus kids in phases one through three um, for critical um, uh, ind individuals or employees, uh, people that live in the district that are critical, 
critical workers. Um, and so we'll be able to provide some opportunity for childcare in the event that we do slide back into uh, phases one through three as a community. So uh, one of the questions is, um, what types of accommodations will be made for kids who don't have quality internet in phases one through three? Um, we address that. Um, that is where those Verizon hotspots will come into play and we'll be able to uh, distribute those uh, hotspots to families as needed. Um, Jen, do you see any questions that you, you can grab? I do. Yep, I sure do. For the online option, how long can I expect my first grader to be online for instruction each day? So that's a great question. We want to make sure that we're putting um, a plan together that has a developmentally appropriate amount of time online and not too much of it. Uh, we expect that the online portion will be uh, less than the away from online portion. So there's a workbook that goes with the um, elementary uh, online option. So students will have a workbook to work in, not just an online option. And their teachers will be checking in with them. I don't have the exact number of hours as we're just getting started making those plans, um, but it will be a developmentally appropriate amount of time. And I see another one that could be mine. What's going to happen with standardized tests? That's a fantastic question. Right now, the state of Michigan is telling us to plan that um, we will still be taking those tests. So as an example, PSAT and SAT currently are scheduled for October 14 on campus for all students who would be needing to take that test as um, current seniors who might need it for a college entrance score or um, other students who are in 9, 10, and 11. Um, we'll see if we're um, on campus at that time, but we plan to give the test that the state of Michigan asks us to give. And spring testing right now, the plan is that we will be giving the test. The state of Michigan has said that um, those will still be scheduled. So currently that's the plan. I don't know if that will hold until springtime. So um, I've got a couple questions, Jen, that I'll, I'll hit. So one is, uh, what's the process if a positive COVID case is identified in school uh, versus one of our classes? And um, so we'll be working closely with the Kent County Health Department um, throughout, this, uh, throughout this school year. In the event that a student or a staff member is identified um, as um, having COVID-19 or being uh, testing positive for COVID-19, uh, then uh, what we'll be doing is uh, reaching out to the health department right away. Um, the health department will help us identify uh, students and staff uh, with whom that individual had close contact. Um, and then uh, once we identify that group of individuals who have had close contact, uh, those individuals will need to quarantine for 14 days. Um, and so if we've got a staff member who is required to quarantine for 14 days, then they will partner with a substitute in the classroom. They'll continue to engage with their students uh, from an online perspective, uh, but we still expect to have those students uh, who are not required to quarantine uh, come to class and, and be ready to go. Um, now, this is something that has changed uh, just in the last couple of weeks uh, as far as guidance from the county or Kent County Health Department has gone. The first uh, line that we had gotten from the Kent County Health Department was that uh, if a student tests positive in a class or if a teacher tests positive in a class, that the entire group would have to uh, quarantine for 14 days. They've rolled that back and now um, have come to the position that uh, what they'll do is they'll work with us to identify the individuals who have uh, had close contact with that particular individual. And so it will be a much uh, more scaled back uh, approach to quarantining. Um, but again, that's why we, it's so important uh, to have our students and our staff uh, take as many protective measures as possible to mitigate the, uh, the spread of the, of the virus. So uh, a couple questions in regard to busing. So uh, if a child goes to school, will buses be picking, and picking them up and dropping them off? Yes, busing will look the same 
uh, as it has in the past uh, with three differences. Uh, so, well, really four differences. So the first difference is that there may be fewer students on the bus uh, because some of our students have elected to uh, choose the online option. Uh, number two, when students get on the bus, uh, they will need to uh, use hand sanitizer uh, as they get on the bus. Um, the third difference will be that uh, each of our students will have to wear a mask uh, while they're on the bus. The driver will also have a mask when she or he is, is driving the bus. And then lastly, all the windows will be down um, while the bus is moving. So the schedule should be, uh, should be same, uh, very similar. Um, everything else should be, should be relatively similar uh, as far as the transportation system goes. Um, a question was uh, raised in terms of our plans and cited sources. Um, you know, we are using the best information possible that has been given to us by the state of Michigan, the Kent County Health Department, and the federal government. Some individuals may argue that that information is not accurate or is not factual, but we are working with that data uh, and we're, we're gonna use that data to help guide our decision making. Uh, are there any specific requirements for masks? The only uh, guidance that we received from the state in the uh, back to school or Safe Start uh, plan was that it needed to be a cloth mask. Uh, in the event that it's not a cloth mask, we do have disposable masks for students uh, to wear if they need one. Um, you know, one person asked if it's political, how much do the students have to wear masks? In, in our professional judgment, it's not political. Masks prevent the exposure to the virus. And if, I, I understand that people differ from that perspective, but um, from the beginning, we have been operating from a position of uh, listening to the Kent County Health Department, listening to uh, federal and state experts on this, uh, and this is the position that we are embracing. So I have a couple that I could answer, Scott. Thanks, um, are the teachers who will be doing online teaching Cedar Springs Public School teachers or are they outsourced? And in fact, we have Cedar Springs Public School teachers who will be doing the teaching and the mentoring of the students. It will be through that online platform. So you may often see a video of another teacher, but the person who will be pushing the learning out and talking with your student will be a Cedar Springs Public School um, employee and working with your students on their learning. Um, a, a great question here, will online students still be able to participate in school sports? And the answer is yes. Um, so to the extent that we're able to have school sports, uh, and as long as they are healthy, they will be able to participate in those school sports. So I'll pick up on a couple of preschool questions, Jen. So first, uh, will there be preschool programs? Will masks be needed to be worn by four-year-olds? Um, so at this point in time, we are planning on preschool programs. Um, at this point in time, there are some questions that we're still working through uh, with the health department in regard to the age at, whisk, at which uh, students should start wearing masks. So there's some guidance that says, you know, individuals who are two years old and a, uh, or older than two years old can, should be wearing masks. Um, then there's other guidance that says that really the threshold should be five years old. So that's something that we're still working on, uh, but as soon as we get that clarification, we'll be sharing that uh, with our families who are uh, looking at preschool as an option for us. Uh, one of the questions was, will intervention or for intervention provided through online learning, will that be similar to intervention for students who are struggling? Uh, the answer is um, it will be similar in that we'll be providing additional supports for students who are struggling, um, but it will just, it may look different than what it's looked in the past uh, for those students. But we are still going to have um, our individuals who are on staff that provide those interventions. We're still going to have supports. Uh, we're still going to have special education supports. All of those things will be, um, you know, will be present for our students, uh, whether they're learning in person or uh, whether they're learning from home. And we're also working and being ready to pivot. Uh, so if we have individuals who serve 
when we are in a in an online uh, or excuse me when we're in a in person scenario, our staff will be ready to pivot overnight uh, if in fact that we do have short notice and have to shift to an online format. And so both the teachers and our support staff will be will, will be ready to make that switch uh, as needed when we go. Mm -hmm. There's a great question here from a high schooler about whether um, they can take the same classes that they signed up for in February if they can take those as an online student. So not every single course that we offer in our traditional high school is also offered through Michigan Virtual. Um, so we will be offering as many as we can that Michigan Virtual offers. Uh, so there may need to be some adjustments there. Um, it's just part of the online experience that it, it's not quite the same as being in person and we recognize that, but we still wanna make it as rich as we can. Um, and uh, there was one other question here that I saw similar to that. And now I don't see it. I can grab a quick one. Uh, so will students be able to bring their own uh, food for lunch? The answer is yes. Um, so lunch, you know, they'll be able to bring their sack lunches from home. Uh, we're still working through the logistics uh, within food service. We know that it's going to be a challenge to uh, get students through um, uh, that process that we've had in the past. We know that we have to keep students physically distanced from one another. And so the types of food that we're serving at lunch uh, through the food service program may be different than what it's been in the past, uh, but we definitely will be providing food service for our, family, for our students. Uh, and, and students will also be able to bring food in um, as, uh, as they go. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question about recess and how we, recess will work. There will still be recess during the day. Students will be designated to a specific area with their class uh, that they will stay with and um, they will have that several times during the day. Uh, it will not be limited to the classroom unless weather would prevent us from going outside. Um, I've got another busing question, and it's a great one. Um, so uh, if busing is required or needed, I thought that I read that each student or rider will need to be wearing a mask. That's true. Um, you know, will busing, how will busing deal with the six foot uh, social distancing? To be honest, that's, that's a question that we don't have a good solution to. Um, we can't, you know, make it so that we only have uh, you know, 10 students on a bus, if we did that, we would not be able to transport students. Uh, and so that was one of the provisions in the return to school roadmap that um, they made an exception. They said, okay, if all students use hand sanitizer um, when they get on the bus, if all students wear a mask when they're on the bus, if we keep the windows down uh, on the bus, the thinking was is that um, there would be, oh, and the other piece in terms of transportation, we'll be grouping families together. Uh, and so siblings will need to sit together when they're on the bus to reduce the exposure to uh, to other families. Um, and so, you know, with those steps being taken, um, that was the workaround to that uh, to that social distancing piece. Um, so I see a question about the online instruction taking place during the day and parents who are working. Um, I think there are two different parts to that answer, and one of them is if you're choosing the online instruction, there will be day-to-day, during-the-day obligations that students have to fulfill in order for us to um, show that we have attendance uh, by our pupil accounting rules for the state of Michigan. So if you're choosing the online option, yep, there will be some work that has to happen during the day. Um, if we are required by um, the state or because of health conditions for us all to go to online, there will also be some expectations during the day. Um, we heard very clearly from our families when we surveyed over uh, 1,070 families that they really wanted students to have more of a schedule that looked like a school day. Um, so, yep, you may need to have some arrangements that um, allow your child to have some support in order to be doing that. I see a question for Matt Blood here about teachers being tested regularly and temperature checks of kids. And I think as the director of human services, he'd probably love to answer that one. Uh, actually, there, there won't be any testing that we are requiring of anyone to do that's all done through self checks. And um, so while we are in phase four, um, 
students are asked to be monitored at home, um, taking their temperature, watching for the symptoms. Um, many of the symptoms I'm sure you're well aware of from all the, um, the communication that's been in the news with you know, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle, body aches. Um, loss of taste and smell and sore throat, cough, and, and so forth. Um, monitoring that uh, temperature of 100.4, um, all of those symptoms and temperature would, would um, presume, even though it could be flu, it could be other things, it would be presumed as uh, possibly COVID. So then therefore they would have to be um, sent home or stay home to um, until they could either be tested and um, found negative or 10 days just like they were if they were um, tested positive. Teachers, same thing. Um, they're doing self checks every day and taking body temperature and, and, so, and watching their symptoms for that. And Matt, what are the protocols if um, someone tests positive? How will families yeah. be notified and what kinds of communication will happen? Yeah, first of all, if, they're, if you test positive, you're required to stay home for in isolation for 10 days. Um, you have to be um, symptom free and you have to um, have been without a fever, without any medication to reduce the fever for over 24 hours. Um, but the 10 days with that, or um, you could test negative for two times um, with a 24 hour spell in between on that. Um, so if someone were to test positive, they would, you know, if it was a teacher, they alert their supervisor, the supervisor then goes through the contact tracing to determine who was in close contact with um, that teacher over that period. And then we have to alert the health department and we have to notify um, home and, and others that have possibly been in contact with that teacher. Likely, I mean, in a, in a situation like the high school, um, you could have a student who tests positive and they have close contact with um, students in all of their classes. And so um, more than likely, we would be sending out more of the bulk emails to say that um, a student had tested positive and that you should be watching um, for monitoring your child for any symptoms with that. But we would be getting in direct contact with the students of close contact because they would have to quarantine. Hey, thanks, Matt. I've got four quick ones. So one is, can face masks that cover the, full, the whole face below the eyes and go around your head uh, work? So something like this, yes, they can ab absolutely wear uh, one of these types of masks instead of the face mask. Um, face masks at recess, we're still trying to determine um, the answer to that question by working again with the Kent County Health Department. One of the things that we will do for recess is have uh, the playground uh, the playground's divided up um, and uh, try to do uh, everything that we can to keep students in their cohort groups um, during recess. Uh, so we'll keep the students uh, playing together by class uh, during, the, uh, during the recess time. Um, sports, can we do sports if we do online? Uh, sports and mar marching band, those other extracurricular things, the answer to that question is yes. Um, and uh, the other question is in terms of preschool, uh, will, we still, will we still have options for uh, uh, Cedar Springs preschool or GSRP? Uh, the answer is yes to both of those options for families. And I see one that I can answer relatively quickly about um, how do we enroll in online or how do we make a choice? Um, someone asked, did I read it correctly that if we want our children to attend in person, we need to enroll. We do need every family to make a choice to let us know what they're planning so that we can plan adequately for staffing of both the online school and the in-person school. And um, we do need that decision by next Friday. So there's quite a bit of information on the website and that enrollment form came to you in uh, a, a school-wide blast today. Um, and you can also find the link to that on our website. It just asks you to tell us your student and what their choice is for the year. 
or at least to get started for the year. Um, I'm seeing questions about visitors in school and parents dropping off kids and coming to pick up kids for appointments. Um, in that case, the, the back to school roadmap is very clear that we're not allowed to have guests in the building. Um, so we do have to limit that. And each building has a plan for how students will get safely into the building. Um, as parents drop them off, there will be different doors that you normally um, go in than you normally go in that you'll be using. And uh, if you need to pick your child up for an appointment, you just simply need to come to the office and they will help you with that. Jen, there are a, question, a couple questions about online classes and how that will look. Will they meet daily? Will there be a regular schedule? Um, can you speak to what it might look like for a high school student or a middle school student who has an online class? Also, there was a question about if they take online classes, can they work ahead? Right. Yep. So um, in some cases, you will have some limited ability to work ahead. You, you know, you wouldn't be able to finish a course in a week or something like that. Um, the teacher will be pacing things out for you and you will have some opportunity to engage with your class live and your teacher live, but it will not be um, nearly as much as if we went to phases one to three and you were an in-person student and your teacher would be engaging with you much more regularly. The online learning is mostly self-paced, asynchronous work. So you're working at your own pace throughout the day. Um, you may have an obligation to meet with your teacher or your mentor teacher uh, several times a week. And at the elementary level, we really envision that there would be a morning message or a meeting together so that students have some idea what they'll be asked to do during the day and parents can listen in on that as well. Um, but it, it's, it's not the same as in person. It's, it's not really designed to be the same as in person. There are just some things that you can't replicate when you choose an online option. Um, so, you know, it's, it's an important choice that you're making. Uh, I saw a question too about whether students could alternate between online and in person throughout the week. And the answer is really no. Um, and this hits on another question I saw about how similar is the curriculum between what's happening in Cedar Springs in person and what's happening online. And the answer is they are not the same. Um, they're covering the same content standards. They're covering the same material that you need to go on to the next grade level or to the next course, but it's not the same as what our teachers would be doing in the classroom. Um, again, it's going to prepare students for the next level of the course or the grade, uh, but that's the reason that we can't have people switching back and forth between because they are not woven together or smoothly integrated. Uh, one question that I see was, what will we do if we don't have enough substitute teachers? I can teach math and science. Matt's a history <laughs> government teacher. Jen can teach English. It's going to be all hands on deck. Uh, but that's a reality that we just, um, we don't have a great answer to. Uh, I appreciate the question, but the reality is, and that's one of the things that I, I'm most nervous about uh, in terms of the start of the school year is, you know, we've got to keep our teachers healthy and we've got to keep our staff healthy and we've got to keep our bus drivers healthy and you know, our food service people. Because if we don't keep those individuals healthy, we will not be able to stay open. That's the bottom line. And so I know that individuals are, you know, really struggling about uh, the mask piece, but that is just the, the best science that we are being given uh, as far as the best way to uh, mitigate or, or uh, reduce the, the risk of uh, exposure to this virus. Um, a quick question about lockers. So uh, high school students, middle school students will get lockers, but they will not be uh, using them on a regular basis. So the idea that we've got is, you know, students will keep everything with them in a backpack, uh, including their, uh, their Chromebook, um, and so uh, then they'll just take those materials with them from class to class. It's another way for us to reduce that uh, risk of physical exposure by students uh, standing and congregating around one another uh, during, during that uh, passing time uh, between classes. I see a question about um, if students are taking classes and they need to step into the um, into quarantine or because someone at home is ill, how will that work? Especially like in an AP class as an example. 
So Canvas, the learning management system that we are using in the district, will really help students to be able to stay on top of what's happening in their classroom. Each teacher will be building their Canvas course so that all of the materials that a student needs to stay up to date will be there on that course. And then just as in regular um, pre-COVID days, if a student were sick and for an extended period of time, that teacher will reach out to that student to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one contact to make sure that they're progressing appropriately. So um, Canvas is gonna give us the opportunity really to do some great things in the, in the midst of this crazy time when things don't seem to look much like they normally do. Um, I also see a question about if, if a student chooses the online uh, option, fully online, will they be able to participate in extracurriculars and sporting events and dances? And the answer is yes to that one. So um, I've got a question about students that get sick throughout the year with a cough or something that's persistent. Um, the guidelines uh, are the same. Are, are they the same? Will they have to quarantine for 14 days? Uh, the answer to that is no. What they would need to do is work with uh, their primary care physician or work with a physician. And uh, as long as they uh, test negative uh, over multiple instances, uh, then they would be able to uh, re-enter uh, the classroom or the school. Again, that's something that we're still working with the health department on um, to get great clarity around uh, because uh, we just wanna make sure that our students and families are safe um, but also that our, our staff are safe as well. So Jen or Matt, you see any others that we can grab? Oh Trying boy, to get different questions. Uh -huh. We will have busing for KCTC students. Um, the one thing that I've heard from KCTC is that they are going to um, be starting a little bit later than normal. Um, but we, they, will have, uh, they will have busing available for KCTC students. Um, the the uh, drop off and pick up of students that don't ride the buses, that's one of those logistical elements that we're still working through. Um, but one thing that we will not be able to do is allow parents to uh, gather uh, in the building or in the vestibules of our schools as they've done in the past. And so we're gonna just have to work that out and, I'm gonna need you to be patient with us as we do work out the details. I know how frustrating it's been in the past. I've been at Cedar Trails when parents are trying to drop their kids off and get to work. And, and I know that that's just a very tense uh, time for people. The thing that's gonna be our greatest ally during those moments is patience and cooperation uh, and a little bit of grace as we work through some of the, uh, some of the details on that work. So I see a question about if people start to complete the survey, could all the plans change on Monday when the board is looking at this plan? Um, our school board got an early peek at this two weeks ago and Heidi maybe wants to chime in on that. I'm not sure, maybe. Nope. Um, so I don't think the whole plan will change. We've been working very cooperatively with the school board so they're well aware of what our plans are. Uh, the only way that things would change is if we have a COVID outbreak and we're required to go to all remote. Um, and then that, that would be out of our control. It would be something that would happen in conjunction with the um, advice of the health department and uh, Spectrum Health. Jen, I can speak. Um, you stated that very well. And we are listening um, to all of these conversations as well. But as you know, you as the administrators have done a lot of work with what um, the Michigan Safe Start Plan has put forward. And then we're trying to build that into the best thing that we can for our Cedar Springs community. Thank you. Thanks, Heidi. All right, so it's 8 p.m. We still have 90 questions in the chat uh, okay. and, and still recognizing that, um, you know, this meeting was limited to 100 attendees. I apologize for that. Surprisingly, um, we've not yet had a meeting that had, uh, that had uh, this many people in, interested and involved. Uh, I, had, I would have one to five people attend the uh, virtual community forums around the bond. Um, and then uh, similarly, we usually have maybe one or two people that queue into the, uh, to the board meeting. 
Um, and so I'll be working with Zoom to try and get that limit uh, expanded. Uh, but please know uh, we'll be uh, looking through all of these uh, Q&As and we'll put together a, um, a Q&A, frequently asked questions form. Um, and then we'll be publishing that online so you can uh, look up answers there to your questions if we did not get to them in person. Also, as Jen has said, um, we'll be sharing more and more information uh, on a regular basis. And so, you know, continue to uh, read through your uh, emails that you get from the district and also continue to uh, utilize the, um, the resources that are shared uh, with families um, on, the, uh, on the website. Uh, and so I thank you so much for uh, joining in and I appreciate your uh, willingness to engage with us in this work. I appreciate your patience. Uh, I, know that, uh, I know that you want answers, so do we, I promise. Uh, and we're doing everything that we can to get you good information out as, as quickly as possible. Um, so again, I, I just appreciate you being here. Um, we will uh, we'll sign off for tonight. Uh, look for some more information uh, coming uh, as, as early as tomorrow in regard to the frequently asked questions and in regard to other details around our fall program. Thank you so much. Uh, take great care. Bye-bye, everyone.